Hi, everybody. Welcome in. I'm so excited. I'm just going to let everybody trickle in for a minute. All right. All right. Welcome, everybody, to this evening's virtual event with Marissa Meyer in conversation with Bethany Finger. My name is Holly Borsanger, and I'm the events assistant here at Bookshop Santa Cruz, where I'm broadcasting live from our very own Rampion right here. Um, and tonight we are thrilled to celebrate the 10th anniversary of Marissa Meyer's book, Cinder. Marissa and Bethany will have a conversation and then we will have an audience Q&A and a fan art showcase, as well as some fun activities sprinkled throughout the event. Um, but first an overview of the event platform. So we are in a Zoom webinar here. Um, we can't see or hear you at home, but we are all here together. And I see everyone's already dropping a line in the chat. So we already know there's totally people on the other end. Um, it's nice to create a community here. Um, and thank you in advance for being respectful in that chat as well. Uh, closed captioning should automatically be on. Um, you can hide it if you'd like. Um, this event is also being recorded, so you can rewatch it if you miss anything. We'll send out the link tomorrow evening. Um, you can also find the replay on our YouTube page later this evening. Um, as for audience Q&A, you can enter those in the little Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. You can pose questions throughout uh, as the talk is underway, and then Marissa will get to those at the end of the event. Um, of course, we encourage you to buy the book. Your purchase supports local jobs and independent culture and shows the publisher that our audience is invested and engaged. So thank you so much for your purchase. Um, of course, we also have lots of great events coming up as well. Um, we have some great virtual events, such as with Karen Ann Murray on March 23rd, as well as a virtual event with local author Emerson Murray on March 31st. And you can check back on our website to view these events and the rest of our upcoming schedule. And now uh, we're going to launch into our audience bingo, which is going to go throughout the entire event. Um, so we're going to link that down in the chat. Look out for that link coming from Corel from Bookshop Santa Cruz. Um, you can play directly online via that little bingo card. You're all going to get your own uniquely generated bingo card. Um, basically, when you hear any of the words on the bingo card mentioned throughout the whole event, check it off. Um, and then if you do get bingo, you're welcome to type bingo in the chat. And we also ask that you um, take a picture of your completed bingo card and email that to events at bookshopsantacruz.com for a chance to win a gift card to Bookshop. Um, we'll put all of that in the chat as well throughout the event um, with that link as well as the email to email us. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, and then we're also going to launch into um, our Zoom poll, uh, which will test your Cinder knowledge and give you a chance to tell us your favorite parts of the book. Marissa will give us the answers to those questions toward the end of the event, so make sure to stick around. Um, and now on to the main attraction. Marissa Meyer is the number one New York Times bestselling author of the Renegades trilogy, the Lunar Chronicles series, as well as the graphic novels Wires and Nerve Volume 1 and Wires and Nerve Volume 2, Gone Rogue, and the Lunar Chronicles coloring book. Her first standalone novel, Heartless, was also a number one New York Times bestseller. She lives in Tacoma, Washington with her husband and their two daughters. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming both Marissa and Bethany to the screen. Hi. Hi. I'm going to turn it over to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for hosting us tonight. Bethany, hi. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are you? I am excellent. This, yeah. I'm Congratulations because so you just ran your first half marathon. I did. I'm like 98% recovered. I'm feeling really good. <laughs> <laughs> I hurt so bad in the days afterwards. <laughs> I bet. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I have a few questions for you, but first I absolutely have to say congratulations. 10 years. Oh, 10. That is incredible. I can't believe it's been 10 years. That seems impossible to me. <laughs> it really does. No, it's gone so fast. Um, I, can't believe like in the last, you know, I've had my kids in the last 10 years and 15 books later and, but it has gone so quickly. Um, and I, I feel like it was just yesterday when I got the phone call that a publisher wanted the series and like I cried and 
yeah, it does not feel like it's been 10 whole years. Um, yeah, I'm so excited. I'm so happy that like people still are reading the book and like that people still care about it and that we actually get to like celebrate 10 years later. That's amazing. Not every author gets that. That's very true. The series has uh, kind of found its way into the bookstagram community and has been thriving for a very long time. So that's very exciting. Thanks readers. <laughs> Okay, so first question, what was the best fan moment for you? Oh, uh, okay, start with a heavy hitter. Uh, <laughs> I thought that'd be an easy one. Oh, wow, there's so many. Ah, Do you want to just mention never, a few that come to mind? I'll never forget the first time someone cried when they met me. Um, that was at San Diego Comic Con and... I was like doing a signing, like right there on the big exhibition floor um, and walking to the table and a girl saw me. She was also going to the signing um, and she, she recognized me and just like, was like, you're Marissa Meyer. And she just started to cry and I didn't know what to do. This had never happened before. Like, I'm just me. <laughs> like, you don't think of yourself as someone people are going to cry when they meet. Um, and like, so I just like gave her a hug. I was like, <laughs> I don't know what else to do, but we're in this together. Um, so that was, I mean, that was a, a moment. I think that was the first time when I realized that the books were impacting people in a much deeper way than I think I'd really given them credit for before that. So that was a really good moment. I think that sounds wonderful. I bet that made her day getting a hug from you too. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen her since then. It's actually, it's been a while, obviously COVID haven't been doing events. Um, but I hope she comes to another event someday. I hope so too. Okay, can we talk about Cinder's adventure? Yes, we can. I was so excited about this. Okay, without giving away spoilers, I have to say how much I adored it. I've gone through, I think, 31 different possible outcomes at the moment. So Holy snakes, you really like, are you, are you trying to keep track and like do it? I really do. I have like a way. whole uh, little notebook on my phone trying to remember which ones I've done. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I remember when I was trying to, okay. So for people who may not know what we're talking about, um, yesterday we released the, an interactive e-novella called Cinder's Adventure. Um, and it's sort of reminiscent of like the old choose your own adventure novels um, for people who remember those. And so it's like, as you're going at the end of a chapter, Cinder has a choice to make and you get to decide, does she do this? Does she do this? And click this link and it'll take you to that path and on and on. And when I was trying to figure it out, like I had, you know, a page in my notebook that was all like, like the old um, brainstorming diagrams, like oh. the spider web diagrams. It's like, the okay. idea web. Yes, exactly. And it's like, okay, she goes here and then here. And it, by the end of it, it was such a mess. And like crisscross and, you know, this <laughs> reconnects to this one and this subplot can like feed into this one. And it was a lot to kind of puzzle through. But then when I actually started to write it, it was so much fun. Um, and I, I just loved all of the different like paths that she goes on. I loved bringing in all of the characters and trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to work in the characters from Instant Karma? How am I going to work in the Renegades? Um, and it just turned into such a totally wacky thing. I actually wanted to title it Cinder's Wacky Adventure. I was um, vetoed on the wacky, but that's kind of how I think of it in my head. That's what fans will forever call it. Right? Cinder's yeah. Wacky Adventure. <laughs> so Where did that idea come part? from to make it like this big interactive adventure? Where'd the idea come from? Mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly. I had actually had on my wish list to do a um, a, a something like this involving Cinder for a couple of years. Um, and I remember pitching it to my publisher once and they passed on it and because it just didn't feel like the right time for it. And I didn't really have it fleshed out at that point yet. And then, you know, they decide, okay, we're going to release the Cinder collector's edition, celebrate the big 10 year anniversary. Um, and they had, someone from the publisher, I don't remember my editor, publicist or someone had come and asked me if I would write like a special short story or something to kind of 
go along with it to, you know, help boost the, the buzz and the publicity and everything. And I thought about, I was like, well, I don't want to just write a short story, but I have this idea for this like adventure, choose your own, you know, interactive thing. Um, and I remember a lot of emails trying to kind of explain what I wanted to do were like, it was really hard to try to like put into words, like here's my vision. And then finally my editor was like, Marissa, you write it and you send it when it's done and I'm sure it'll be great. I was like, okay, I'm on it. <laughs> That's a wonderful relationship that uh, she just trusts you. She's like, it's okay. You got this. It's good. We've been through a lot together. <laughs> Well, I had a ton of fun with it. I'm sure I'm going to have so much more fun with it. What made you decide to include characters from all of your other books? Yeah, I think because the initial idea, and this was like from the idea when I had it years ago, um, it was going to be like a cinder down the rabbit hole thing. And so it had kind of started out as just a Lunar Chronicles heartless crossover. Um, and but I, I didn't, at that point, I wasn't planning on bringing in the Heartless characters. Rather, it was going to be um, like we see in Cinder's Adventure, where like, okay, Eco is the white rabbit and Scarlet is the queen of hearts and that sort of thing. And so that was kind of the genesis of the idea. Um, but then as I was brainstorming and thinking about it and Gilded had just come, actually Gilded wasn't out yet. It was about to come out when I was writing it and I just thought it would be really fun to like do this huge Marissa Meyer universe crossover mishmash thing um and so I ran with it and then of course like the my little marketing brain was like cool this way if readers haven't read all my other books maybe they'll be like <laughs> oh we've got to go check out her other books now thinking always thinking that's right <laughs> Well, I have to say, I hope it's not too much of a spoiler, but as a, a gamer, I was very excited about how Instant Karma was incorporated. Thank you. Thank you. You are going to like the next Instant Karma book. Oh, <laughs> good. I'm excited for it. <laughs> yes. I will say that's another thing in Cinder's Adventure that there are hints to a number of my upcoming projects, um, things that I haven't really <laughs> talked about or revealed yet. It's all very hush hush, but I I put in some, I put in some secrets there for you guys to, to mull over. There's one big one that I know I caught and a lot of uh, my Patreon people caught. So we're all hoping that that one is real. <laughs> I suspect I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it like having to go back to some of these characters that are 10 years old or six years old? Did you have to go back to your notes and really find their voice again? You know, I wrote, was writing the Lunar Chronicles for so long that I, I just know these characters. Um, uh, I remember having to go back and look for some like details of the world building and like what, you know, what did we call, you know, certain things like when it came to Cinder's, um, uh, is that, I can't even think of it, her, her brain thing or her, you know, whatever it's called. Um, so like, there was some <laughs> lingo that I had forgotten um, but as far as the characters' voices went, like, no, I really feel like I've, I, they, they are in me. They are a part of me at this point. Good. Okay. I have one big question. I hope it doesn't put you on the spot. Grace okay. A few years ago, we met at the North Texas Team Book Festival. Right and before COVID. <laughs> like the last event before COVID. It was literally like four days before everything shut down. It was crazy. Yeah, I was um, worried I was going to get stuck in Texas that they wouldn't let me fly home. <laughs> I didn't think of that. Yeah, I drove, so I got to leave. Um, <laughs> so you mentioned there that if you could change one thing about the Lunar Chronicles, you would give Kai a last name. Did, did you have that in your head when you were writing Cinder's Adventure? Oh yeah, that's, I mean, that's something that I, it's kind of like a joke, like an inside joke at this point, <laughs> you know, it's like, Kai still doesn't have a last name. Why would I give one to him now? Um, yeah, that's but, fair. Yeah, but. His last I name mean, is of the Eastern Commonwealth. Of the Eastern Commonwealth. I know, <laughs> I know. No, it's, uh, and there's a few things in this book or in the, the e-novella that, you know, kind of poke fun, the things that kind of come up over the years that you're like, mm, yeah, that was kind of ridiculous, but like, let's shed light on that. I'm not embarrassed by it. <laughs> For those of us who are, are very familiar with the series, some of those little nods were a lot of fun, I will say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. So, it's really very much something that I wrote 
<laughs> for the fans. Like, I hope you guys have a lot of fun with it. I can't speak for everybody, but I know the people I've talked to have loved it. Good. I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> so I have to talk about this. I have mine too. It's beautiful. It's so pink. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love how bright, like vibrant and pink and purple is my favorite color. So I love all the purple. Nice. Yes. I think it's so stunning. I just got mine like a few hours ago. So I've just been like, oh. It's so pretty and it smells good. Like you open it up and it's that's what my husband said. <laughs> I love that. I used to work at a publishing house. Um, and it was like whenever the new books would come in, everyone would just like gather around the front desk sniffing them. <laughs> I work for an indie bookstore, and I have to say that that is a, a general thing that we do as well. <laughs> Book people, we are so weird. <laughs> Did you get to be a part of the design at all? for the new book, for the cover and the sleeve? Not really. Um, no? There's such a great design team there at Macmillan um, that like they, they told me what they were doing and had some ideas and they sent me like the, you know, as designs were being finalized, they would send them to me. Um, so I, I could comment. And if I'd had any suggestions, I'm sure they would have taken them, but I was just like, that's stunning. Do it hit the print button. So yeah, I didn't have any criticism and I think it's so cool. I just love all of the little details on the spine and like the different, um, where is it? Oh, here, like the little moons at the top. I just think it's all so cool. So well put together. So good job, Macmillan Design Company. Cause it's beautiful they do. They do. and it does smell really good. <laughs> it does smell good. Thank you, printer. <laughs> So I want to ask about the Phantom of Linkshire Manor, which those of us who did a pre-order got a glimpse at. And it was wonderful. Is there any way for other people to download it or purchase it? Or will there be a way in the future? That is an excellent question. Um, <laughs> it's funny because that, so let me think. So we sent that out as one of the pre-order mm -hmm. gifts. Um, if you pre-ordered Gilded, um, but it was actually a story that I wrote. I don't even know. like must be like 15 years ago at this point. Um, it was my first published work of fiction. Um, it was published in an anthology under a different pen name. Um, and, and so when we were trying to come up with like, what are some pre-order incentives? I had this idea, I was like, well, I wrote this story a while back and it's sort of dark and sort of gothic. And what do you think? And so they were on board with it. Um, and then I went back and revised it because it was very like 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but somebody, so since it got sent out to readers, I actually haven't heard anything about it. So I hope that people are liking it. Um, as far as will it be available, I will have to talk to the publisher and to my agent. I honestly don't know if there's been any talk about it or any plan, um, but I would love, I always want everything to be widely available. So yeah, we'll see. I'm going to write okay, myself yeah. a note. Hold on. Cause I totally forgot about it. <laughs> I will bring it up to them tomorrow and find out if there's a plan. <laughs> okay, last lunar Bethany, cross. You were like, I am on the side of the fans. Let's address some yes. things. No, because I, I get emails a lot and I try to answer every email I get. So I, I do spend hours a day zoning through all of them. So I do. I know there's been a big request for that one. I very much enjoyed it. If you ever wanted to go down the historical fiction path, I would be super excited to read it. I was so happy to hear that. It's very, um, I mean, very much inspired by like Jane Eyre, um, you know, like right in that, that ballpark. Um, not at all historically accurate in a lot of ways. <laughs> like we'll just put that out there. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it's a fun story. I'm glad you it liked it. Yeah. Okay. So last Lunar Chronicles question, Locksmith Animation Studio. I know. Um, I have no new news. <laughs> no, I want to know how you're feeling. Are you excited? Are you like apprehensive? No, not at all. Um, I, yeah, I think the company is fantastic. It's a pretty new company. Um, but like everybody involved in it has been in Hollywood and in animation for like decades. So there's a ton of knowledge and a ton of talent and it's like an all woman led company and they seem so excited and 
you know, this is my fourth time through the Hollywood circuit, the fourth time a company has uh, optioned the rights to Lunar Chronicles. So I've kind of learned to keep like a lid on my expectations, but I am always hopeful and they just seem like they love the property and hopefully, hopefully it will move forward. And I really wish that I had more things I could tell you, but it's all like really early at this point there. I think last I heard they were um, trying to attach screenwriters and maybe a producer or something like that. So still very early. Very exciting though. We were, there was a lot of uh, hype on Instagram for like a good week there. <laughs> I know, I really, truly, I want it to happen so bad. I think animation would be so cool. Like the way that you could do the lunar glamour and like the wolf soldiers. I just think it would be really amazing. So. The glamour was the first thing I thought of too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we'll see. We'll see. As soon as I have news, you will have news. Yay. <laughs> Everybody pay attention to Marissa Meyer newsletter and Instagram and social media. <laughs> so, I only have secrets when they force me to keep secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you everything if I could. Serendipity came out in January. It was amazing. It was a an anthology of different romantic tropes with all these incredible writers. Was that your idea or did someone approach you with that idea? Yeah, no, that was my idea. Um, I had wanted to do an anthology for a long time. Um, and yeah, I don't, I mean, I just, the original idea had actually been to do um, a collection all around Valentine's Day. Um, and so that was what I pitched to my publisher. Um, and part of it, like, again, like my little marketing brain, I was like, Instant Karma had just come out. I know nobody sees me as like a contemporary romance writer. So what if we do an anthology and I get to edit it and it will like help position me more as a contemporary romance author um, and they bought it. So, <laughs> um, but they felt like the, the Valentine's Day angle um, was like too, you know, too tied to the holiday. And they were like, we really want it to, you know have more reach or, you know be on shelves for more than a month. Um, and then actually it was someone's idea at the publisher to instead do, uh, the romantic tropes, uh, which I love. I love tropes. I love writing them. I love talking about them. I think there's a reason that we come back to these stories again and again. Um, so as soon as they sent that idea to me, I was like, perfect, I'm in. And I started putting together my list of authors and I think it turned out so good. I, love the authors that were on board. I think the stories are so good. They're so fun and romantic and heartwarming. And I'm just like super proud that I got to be involved with it. I would agree with you. It was, it was absolutely incredible. And it was wonderful to just like sit there and read so many romantic books, like over and over and over again. It was, yes. I, my romantic heart was very happy. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that. It was I mean, for me, when we were going through the process, because the stories, like, they don't come in all at once. You know, some authors are ahead and some are behind. Um, so there was a period where I would get a new story every few days. And it was like every time one arrived and I got to read it, it was like a little gift from the universe. <laughs> like, here's another thing to make you smile. And I was just like, this just makes me giddy. I'm so excited about this. It was wonderful. And honestly, I think that it's one of my favorite things is to read anthologies. Um, so for, for me personally, it was great. Cause when you read an anthology, it's like, look at how many books I finished today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do too. I love short stories. I love that you can like that. There's not a big commitment. I mean, of course I love novels. I love series, all the things, but you know, sometimes you just want to sit down and have beginning, middle and end all in a row and be like, that was cute. Moving on with my day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So a few years ago in an interview, you said if you could have any of your books turned into a musical, it would be Heartless. And there's a Heartless musical. You must be so thrilled. Can you believe it? It's so cool. <laughs> when I found out about it, I was like, that's the one book she said she wanted. This is amazing. I know. You know, it's what I, my agent and I have a lot of conversations about like visualization. Um, and I know a lot of people think it's hokey, uh, but I truly, I am a believer. If you put a message out into the universe, I think the universe responds. So this I is one of those times. 
I mean, I would, I would completely agree. 100%. I wanted to meet you and I did. So <laughs> See, <laughs> just have to put it out there. <laughs> so for anyone who's wondering, there is a, uh, a team of students in Holiday, Utah, that is creating an amazing Heartless musical. It'll be out in April, April 22nd, I believe. They're going to do a live stream in May. Uh, and you can follow this everywhere at Heartless Musical, Heartless The Musical, I think. The but Musical. The um, musical. One second. We have a visitor. Hi, honey. Hey, Sloan. This is Sloan. Oh, your sister's here, too. And this is Delaney. Hi, Delaney. Hi. <laughs> what are you girls doing out here? Uh, we have something. Sloan wants to be my co-host. Co oh, and also we have something to give. Okay, what do you have to give Sorry, me? Um, if uh, you would show me the honors. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> what's this? It's a gift. A gift for mom from Sloan. Oh, what is this? A little kitty cat. Did you paint this at the pottery store? Oh, it's beautiful. Can we see on the? Aww, oh, this, this is incredible. The one you made for my birthday. Oh, thanks, honey. That's beautiful. You made something for grandma. You're going to go take it to her? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and I painted it to have a black. Right it's got a black side. stripe. It kind of looks like a raccoon a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of a raccoon. It's a black cat on that side and a brown cat on that Aww. side. Thank you, sweetheart. I love it. Yeah. I'm going to put it right here so it can always keep me company when I'm writing. Yeah, kitty cat company. <laughs> All right, honey, you go with daddy and go see grandma, okay? Okay. okay say goodbye. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> You never oh, know when you see them coming out. It's like, hmm, how is this going to go? <laughs> I love that they gave you a cat. Now you can have a new muse while you're writing. I love it. I love it. No, they're very sweet. They went and painted pottery. I mean, it's been weeks ago now. Um, they've just been waiting to go pick it up. And so they've kept hunting like, mommy, we made you something. So, But they were very good about keeping the secret, which is not usually the case. <laughs> I can't keep a secret if I make something. If I if I make something for someone, I get super excited about sending it. So yeah. <laughs> good for them. They did good. <laughs> they did good. Um, okay. So the Heartless musical. Yes. Yeah, so it's on April 22nd. Are you going to be there? I think you talked yes. about it. I'm going to have to get My together. husband and I um, get have already got it planned. I've got a sister that lives there. So I'm Please. already super excited to go yeah I am too I am so so excited um so people should definitely follow their Instagram their TikTok go see the website Heartless the Musical um you would have no idea that it's a group of teenagers right? in charge they are incredible they are so talented they did they wrote the script they wrote the lyrics wrote the music um did the choreography I mean they're incredible and I think it's going to be just such a cool show and I cannot wait to go I'm, I'm so excited yeah absolutely I was super thrilled and I'm very impressed with all of the work that they've put in and how hard they've been working I can't wait to see it come to life yeah me too me too yes <laughs> okay so last question before we move on to fan art do you have any plans for what you're going to write after cursed which comes out in November Oh, Bethany. <laughs> I know you have plans. Can you tell us anything? So many things. Um, yes. So Cursed is coming out in November. Um, I have a, one of my projects that sold like three years ago is finally going to come out then the following year. I still, we still haven't announced it, so I still can't tell you what it is, but there's something coming out. Um, I've got my fingers crossed. It's one of those kids books you were talking about. I can't give any hints, but I will tell you that it is a project of my heart. I love oh. this project so much and it kills me that I can't talk about it. Uh, so there's that. Um, and then my next novel is going to be the next Instant Karma book. Um, so the next Fortuna Beach book. It doesn't have a title yet, uh, but I can tell you that Jude, Prudence's brother, is the main character. Um, and it will you know, be, be the same vein where it's, you know, contemporary with a little twist of magic involved. 
after that, I seriously have like six other things that I'm working on. Um, so I've had a little bit of a break. The cursed went off to copy edits. Uh, it's been like two and a half weeks. Um, and I think I have another week and a half before I get it back. So I've been using this time to be like, okay, fun projects. What are all the other things that I'm not supposed to be working on? Um, so there's there's picture books, there's graphic novels. Um, I have a middle grade that might someday be a thing that I'm really excited about. I have other novels that I'm excited about. We'll see. I'm excited if, the, if I ever get to read the kids books. I taught preschool for several years and I love children's literature. So I do I've got my fingers crossed. Thank you. Thank you. We will see. <laughs> okay. So I think that's all the questions because I think we have to move on to fan art. Do we have that ready to go? <laughs> Yay. Okay. okay. So we're going to scroll through. I have not seen any of these. Have you seen these? No, not unless they were on Instagram because I've been paying attention on Instagram. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is all new to me. I'm excited. <gasps> yes. Okay. So what? I know these people is Amy, Amy Koss. She's amazing. I've definitely seen her before. These are so good. Look at them together. I love it so much. I love Lavana. I do too. No, and that expression she's got. Fire. I love the crown and Cinder's gun. It's like so badass. I love it. Is she holding a dagger? I think it is a dagger. That's awesome. This is would totally have a dagger. Cool. They are so into it too. You can like see it in their faces. Amy Koss is a professional cosplayer and she often does Cinder. So if you go to her page on Instagram, you'll see just dozens and dozens and dozens of amazing pictures and videos that she's created. I love it love it oh there's okay. another one with amy cost and this one also has carter riley and nathan johnson did the photography these oh, are amazing I love is this a, i'm trying to remember is this is from a scene in the book i mean i know so the one on the left is kind of like when at the very end of winter that's, that's the one the vibe like, i get yeah um I don't think I remember a scene where she fell and he caught her, but I like the idea of it. Yeah, I'll have to write something new and add it. Did he help <laughs> her up off the ground in the first book? I'm sorry, say that again? He did help her off the ground in the medical lab in the first book. That's so true. that's true. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> but no, I, I love this. Look rising. at the foot. Look at the foot she's holding. It's tiny. It's so cool. The details with the wires sticking out and everything. Oh, oh my goodness. They put I in so it. much effort. It looks amazing. It does. And the backgrounds, this is so fun. Oh, her leg. Oh my oh, gosh. Wow. I love I, that she's actually working in the garage. This is I amazing. Know. I love it. It's so authentic. And she I looks so bored. Know, like, she just go into her family's garage and like sit down mm -hmm. and do this or like how much time was spent like getting the background and all of the details set up because it looks there's a like, lot of detail I'm going to give her a lot of credit that she probably put a lot of work into it because that's that's a great deal of detail if, if you look at the top of the tool chest it looks like what we have described to us in cinder when she's going into the storage room and she's working on all of her uh, little gadgets that she's working on. It looks kind of like how it's described. So it does. It totally yeah. does. No, I love it. I love all of the details. I love her expression in that first uh, one. I know. Well, in both of them, like in the one on the right, you can see her like really thinking about it, you know? And she's holding wire cutters in the second one. Is that what that is? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's wire cutters. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes. Oh, cool. Oh my gosh. Look at this hand. Look at so this. Ridiculous <laughs> Amanda is a friend of mine. This is amazing. So Ridiculous Amanda is a Amanda Garrison from Fictional Hangover Podcast. And she also does audiobooks. Like so Mary? This is, yeah, she also does audiobooks. She narrates them. She just did <gasps> one um, with my critique partner, Abigail Spagari for Daughter of the Moon. And it's phenomenal. So this is so cool that she's on here. This is so cool. I love the leg. It's I want to know how she did it. She painted it on. Is it paint? Yeah. It's isn't so that a shiny? 
I love oh my it. goodness. Very peculiar pages. I've seen a few from, from their page and it looks amazing. I love the, again, their facial expressions are so good. So sassy. And I love the, the, um, patches on the, what do you call them? Coveralls there. They're yeah. Like so it looks like a, uh, is that a butterfly? A butterfly yeah. and the moon child. What's the one on the top there? I'm looking. I, I think it's the insignia. Maybe. I don't know, but it's cool looking. Most, and of course, you can let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I love how everyone really gets into like the smudging of themselves too. Yeah, because she always has dirt on her face. <laughs> Eco's biggest problem with her, she's always got dirt on her face. Can't you wash your face, Cinder? <laughs> It'll kill you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. oh, I love this. Look at the coloring on this first one. That is, is very vibrant. I love it. I think that's digital art and it's incredible. So pretty. I love her love hair too. The, I wish I could pull hair, off a messy ponytail like that. Yeah. Artists are so cool. <laughs> Even my Look handwriting is not too. good. I can't imagine how, how much work put into this. This second one is amazing. Look at all of the interface information popping up when she's looking at Kai. Oh my gosh. And the expression on her face. Oh, I love it. And you can I, see her foot and she, oh, and then Nancy's on the table. This is amazing. Look at the lighting. Yeah. The you can tell that it's kind of, that she's under the light. Yeah. That In the shadows. So and she's I holding her head because she just hit her head on the table. That's right. right. That's so right. she's holding her head when he shows up. Oh. I love it. I love it. It's like we're on the outside looking in, but then also seeing what she's saying. It's so clever. This is very brilliant. Oh my goodness. This is fun. Whoa. <laughs> Look oh. at Eco. I love it. I'm holding the foot. Oh my gosh. Oh, and she's got the, the ribbon. I love it. She's got Peony's ribbon. And then if you look at Cinder, she's got, is that a wrench sticking out of her back pocket? <laughs> Oh, I, I love that. Foot or attaching the new foot, one or the other. I think she's attaching the new foot and Eco is getting rid of the old foot. I get that feeling too. The old one looks a little beat up. <laughs> she's like, I will dispose of this for you. <laughs> but that's some incredible shading. Is it charcoal or pencil maybe? Yeah, I don't know, but I, I agree. It's so pretty. Beautiful. I mean, the details in the stool, like to put in the little nails. The little lines and the grooves where the screws go. That's amazing. So cool. And then oh, the man. second one is so great. Look at her expression. She's like, I'm it. amused by you, Eco. <laughs> I love Eco though. She has so much expression, even though we can't see her face very well. I love it because she's amazing. Oh, I know, with her little hands. Uh, you can like hear them speaking to each other in this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is where Eco is fangirling about Prince Kai. He is totally fangirling. But I was going to say the exact same thing. Like there's <laughs> Fan Kai gushing happening in this picture. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Cinder's all cool. Like whatever. Not interested. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. Look at, oh, look at her standing on one leg. Oh my goodness. And the wires are sticking out on both the foot and her leg. Oh, uh, I love, and oh, Nancy on the table. And look at Kai's smirk. Oh, I, know. <laughs> I kind of love that you can see Kai's whole outfit and not just his gray sweatshirt. Like he's in full incognito. Full incognito, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I, I love, love Cinder's expression. She is. looks like embarrassed, smiling, kind of. <laughs> nervous smile I love it oh so expressive and I love the font that they chose for Cinder by Marissa oh, Meyer yeah. that's a, that's fantastic it's very like good book cover uh-huh or a book poster like a promotion poster yeah yeah I love it oh my goodness I just like turned my eyes to the second one so beautiful I love, I love the moon in the background. I wonder if this is intended to be like a wedding picture. I was going to say, it looks like the kind of photography you would get at a wedding. It does. Like and they look older. Where they like, look I don't know if that's older. intentional, but they look a little bit more mature too. Mm -hmm. And I love the, the peony in her hair. That's beautiful. 
so pretty. I know. And the earrings. And look at the way they're looking at each other. They're so happy. And I love her bell sleeves. Mm -hmm. The bell shaped sleeves on her arm. Those are yes, beautiful. Very popular. Very chic in, on Luna. <laughs> Eco picked this dress. Eco definitely <laughs> and did her hair and did her makeup and picked the jewelry, everything. <laughs> The whole aesthetic, all the color tones, that was eco. 100%. I love it. And I love that she's like fancified here, but still has a ponytail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our girl would not be caught dead without her ponytail. Right? <laughs> wow. Oh, I love this. I shared this one a few years ago. This is amazing. She's at the ball and this is her first interaction with Lavana. That is so cool. Look at all of the details in the background. You can see all of the inside of the ballroom and the palace. You can see all the people. You can see their face. You can see like their facial expressions and how they look shocked, but they can't look away. Oh my gosh. Wow. And like, if you look really faintly on the wall, right above the crown is like, you can see portraits. Like, like this would be like oh, the wow. emperors and empresses from the past. Like I didn't even notice that. That's amazing. I am so smitten. And then, of course, Lavana and Cinder and their expressions. Yes. That is so cool. And even though it's black and white, like Lavana is sparkling. She really is. She's genuinely twinkling. And her smile is both wicked and alluring. And I love that you can see all the stains all over the dress and the gloves. And then. Oh. Lavana comes in looking regal and perfect. I love it. I am blown away by this piece of art. I would like to have this like on a canvas somewhere. So beautiful. Miscellaneous. Ooh. Ooh. What do you suppose miscellaneous is? Oh my gosh. Oh, it's like craft stuff. I love it. I love it so much. Morgan chose all of these. Good job, Morgan. <laughs> You did great. This first one, do you see all of the gears I that have do. been glued to the page? That's wonderful. And the stars. And it's and then like, are those metal scraps? Is that it's scrap metal? Oh, look, it's got my signature on it. I signed something. I was just going to say that. You signed this. <laughs> she was, I imagine someone coming to the one of my signings and be like, don't ask questions. Just sign this. Just piece. sign this. <laughs> you'll get it someday and look at the calligraphy I took a calligraphy class in high school and it is really really hard to do good calligraphy <laughs> it was terrible it. It. yeah I wonder if it's painted all the different colors okay and then the Funko doll I know it's beautiful With I love her smudging. outfit for her <laughs> Her yes. More smudging, and then I love her outfit that she's wearing. Look at the boots. The boots are so cool. Yeah, and the belt. You can see like a little belt buckle. But it's like a it's like a tool belt. It is like a tool belt. Yeah. Oh, oh these so are incredible. Cool. I love this. I love this like art stuff that we get to see. I know. There more more. Oh, oh my gosh, Thank that was you, amazing. Art. So much fun I'm so glad I got to see all of those thank Me you too. that was amazing I love all the fan art that people do and all of the like crafty stuff that people do um I actually just got a really beautiful um embroidery that was Lunar Chronicles inspired I haven't hung it up because we're moving but nice I've seen some um doing the scavenger hunt um that we've got going on it's not too late to join in. Uh, go look at my Instagram, see the prompt, join in. You can win stuff. Um, but there's been a couple of embroideries coming through on that. And I'm just like, I can't even imagine how long that would take someone to do. I think it's so cool. What a cool skill. I mean, blankets, when I crochet them, they usually take about a month or two. So I can only imagine embroidery is like even more skillful because it's so tiny. It's so tiny. So wow. tiny. <laughs> But this was amazing. Thank you so much for having me. And Morgan, thank you for inviting me and getting this all set up. And Holly for getting it all put together. Bethany, thank you for being here. This was a pleasure. Yes, always. And I'm super excited for the rest of the event. Thank you. <laughs> Hi again. Hello. This is so much fun. I'm super excited to now get into some Q&A. 
Um, actually, do you want to do the poll first? The polls, to... yes. Yeah. How do I find that? Is that down on this little polls button? Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. What do you guys think? Um, I have I here. Uh, let me, let me share the results with everyone so they can see what people answered. Okay, Cinder's real first name, Celine. Most of you knew. Uh, who is your favorite Lunar Chronicles ship? Look how it's very evenly split between the first three. Um, I really appreciate you 12 people who picked Winter and Jason. They are an unappreciated couple, underappreciated. <laughs> but I love them. I love all of them, of course. Um, I am not surprised that Crescent Thorn won the poll there. <laughs> what is the currency Eunice? Good job, you guys. Your favorite quote from Cinder, even in the future, the story begins with once upon a time, um, which I actually don't think is a quote in the book. I think it's only on the back cover. Um, but it's one of those things. It's kind of become synonymous with the series, I think. Uh, who is your favorite character? Cinder. I'm surprised. I totally would have thought Eco or Kai would have rocked that question. Um, but I am so glad you guys love Cinder. I love Cinder too. That was fun. There's some thank bingos you. popping up in the, the chat too now. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yay. Yeah. Thanks <laughs> to that poll, I think. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay. There are so many questions. Um, I'm just going to pick through them a little bit. Also, Marissa, if you see one that really pops out to you and you want to go for it, let me know. But okay. um, let's start with a question from Olivia. Olivia says, if you had to pick just one, who of your characters is your favorite? <laughs> Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be that, Olivia. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say someone not from Lunar Chronicles. Um, I'm going to say Jest from Heartless, um, I think is probably my favorite character that I have written to date. Wow. All right. Thank you. Um, okay, Megan says, what couple was the easiest to write in the Lunar Chronicles? Ooh, that is a great question. Um, who was the easiest to write? Probably Cress and Thorn, um, because Cress was the, of the four female leads, she was the one that I felt like was the most me. Um, I could really relate to her in like a million different ways with the like eternal optimism and always seeing the best in people. And like, she's the daydreamer and all of that. I just felt like I really understood her from the beginning, whereas some of the others, I really had to do a lot more exploration with. Uh, and then Thorn, he is one of those just great characters that kind of just writes himself. Like he knew who he was from page one. And I just kind of, wrote like I would like hear his voice in my head and I'd be writing and I'd be rolling my eyes and like really thorn <laughs> how you gotta say this stuff but that's who he was um and so between the two of them they just uh kind of paired together really easily totally I love that thank you um let's see anonymous attendee can we expect anniversary editions of the rest of your books I have absolutely no idea. I wish that I had an answer to that question. Um, I have heard nothing one way or the other. Uh, I hope so. I would really like to see them. Um, and I think that seeing all four together would be really cool. I suspect that part of that decision is going to be based on how well this one does. I don't know that for sure. Um, but publishers need to make money. Uh, so, but yeah, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I hope so. Totally. That's a good, uh, good moment to remind everyone to buy the book. <laughs> buy the book. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay. Ooh, this is a good question. Um, Camille says, how did you work through Cinder's world building? Oh, um, it's, it was a long process and it was one of, I mean, in the series, because it, travels around so much like the world was continuously expanding I was always learning more about the world always creating more about the world um right up until the end and even into like the graphic novels I was still learning things about how the world worked um but it was very much like I 
I started with the technology. Um, I wanted to get an idea of how advanced is it versus what are some of the limitations. Um, and then also from early on, like I knew there was going to be this species of people who had evolved on the moon. Okay, well, what is that like? And how did they evolve? What's the science there? Um, space travel, colonization, all of that. And so I just kind of started asking myself a lot of questions like, okay, if we're, we're this far in the future, this is what the technology is like. How did we get here? What are the politics like? Um, what is, how has the culture changed? How has it stayed the same? Um, you know, drawing a lot of inspiration from different places in the world and just kind of let things build. And as you ask more and more questions, uh, answers come. And a lot of times you answer one question and then you've got 10 more. Well, okay, if that's the answer, what about X, Y, and Z? Uh, and so just kind of going down a lot of different paths and trying to uh, make it as authentic and believable as possible. Yeah, that makes sense. That sounds like a, a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of fun too. Yeah, no, I mean, world building, it is, uh, I don't feel like I'm a natural world builder. Um, I think that I really have to do a deep dive into figuring out how things work because otherwise I don't trust it on the page. Like mm -hmm. even if there's a detail that never comes up in the books, I feel like I need to have an explanation so that like, if anybody ever asks me, I'm like, no, it works because of this. Um, but it does require a lot of, yeah, a lot of background work. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, Jaden says, what other fairy tales have you thought of doing a retelling of? So many. I seriously have a page in my OneNote. Uh, it's got, I don't even know, probably 30 or 40 different fairy tales and like ideas that I've had for what I would do and how I would twist them and why that one's interesting. So there's a lot. Um, I'd say some of the ones that kind of continuously come up to the top that I, I would love to do at some point, um, Bluebeard is one that I've been saying for years I was gonna do, still haven't done it, but it's one that I just love and I think you could really do something very cool with. Um, the Snow Queen has potential, um, I've had ideas for that. There's also one of my all-time favorites is a Norwegian tale, um, East of the Sun, West of the Moon. Uh, one that a lot of people haven't heard of, but it's so good and the, I just know that it would make an amazing retelling, so. Those are some, we'll see, we'll see. I'm excited to see which one of those comes to life. <laughs> awesome. All right, let's see. Oh my God, there's so many to choose from. Okay. Oh, here's just a nice comment. Um, Michael says, having hosted you in Cincinnati for Cinder 10 years ago, I just wanted to tell you that my now 12 year old daughter just read Cinder and loved it and is now halfway through Scarlet. Congratulations. Aww. Oh my gosh. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, what he didn't say is that that was my first ever event on book tour uh, mm -hmm. there in Joseph Beth, Cincinnati. And it was incredible. And like, I was so nervous and so scared. And like, who's going to come? Like, nobody's heard of me. This is my first book. And there were like a good 20 or 30 people in the audience. And I was just like, this is amazing. I can't believe it's my life. So good, good memories. That's so sweet. I love that. Um, Lupita says, which of the Lunar Chronicles books was the most fun to write? Oh, can I say the graphic novels? No, it's not like one of the official books. Um, I had so much fun writing the graphic novels. And part of it was, because by that point, I just knew the characters so well that I was, I was done world building. I was done developing characters. It was just like pure story, which is the part that's the most fun for me. Um, and I just loved kind of getting to take these characters and, you know, fast forward a year and see, okay, now what are they up to? And so you got to get to see how they're their relationships are going and you know how things are going on Luna and it was just really really fun and then of course seeing the illustrations when the illustrator started to get to work on it was just a blast I'm just so cool to see it through someone else's eyes totally that's awesome um let's see oh this is cool um Anna says do you have tips for people who like to write fantasy books about just how you make the characters so lovable and realistic. 
Oh boy. Um, how do you go about making characters lovable and realistic? <laughs> you know, I would say it's a process. Um, don't feel like you have to have it figured out in your first draft, um, in your second draft, even in your third draft. Like for me, a lot of times the first draft is about story and plot and just figuring out, like making sure the story makes sense and we can get from point A to point C, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it's like, but as I'm writing, we're starting to get to know the characters and I'm starting to uncover who they are and what do they want and why are do they doing these things that they're doing? Um, but it's, it's really like with every draft, I'm going to dig a little bit deeper and dig a little bit deeper. Uh, and a lot of times for me, it's not until the third or fourth draft of a book when I really start to hear their voice mm. and they start to like, there's always a moment when they just come to life all of a sudden. And I'm like, that's who you are. That's who I've been waiting for this whole time. And then you have to go and revise it again. Cause now they've got a totally different voice and none of the dialogue works anymore. Um, but that point does come. You just have to keep, keep digging and keep asking yourself questions. You know, what are they motivated by? What do they care about? What are they afraid of? Um, and just explore and let see what happens and, and kind of let things come up in the story. Totally. That helps. Yeah. So you're like creating them and then they kind of just go off on their own journey and you eventually, get them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, that's what works for me. I know there are writers who like create their characters before they start writing and they want to like have that voice in their head and they want to know their backstory and know who they are beforehand and that works for them for me it's always more of an exploration and kind of getting to know you situation totally that totally makes sense um I think we have time for like one or two more um let's see oh gosh um are there any books, TV shows, comics, movies, et cetera, that you are consuming yourself now that you recommend and are excited for? Oh my gosh. Uh, yes. I just finished the most fun book. Um, it was a, a blurb request, so it doesn't come out until June, I think is when it, June or July. Um, it is called Game of Strength and Storm. Uh, and it is a take on Greek mythology on the 10 labors of Heracles, um, except for the 10 labors have been split between these two incredible female protagonists. And it is truly one of the most creative, like imaginative worlds that I have read in a really long time. The protagonists are so cool. Um, just like the take on mythology where it's familiar, but the author really twisted it in some ways that are just brilliant and I cannot wait for this book to come out because I want everyone to read it I think it's really phenomenal game what of strength again and storm. game of strength and storm I believe I'm pretty sure uh, and I think the author is Rachel Menard okay cool we'll, we'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll look out for that one um, okay one last question this is fun um, Camille says who would you want to co-write a novel with and what genre would it be oh gosh um you know I one of my long 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 time friends um Tamara Moss is what she publishes under uh and she's got a middle grade series called Lin, called Lin Tang and the Pirate Queen and we've been best friends, or not best friends, but we've been really good friends since we were teenagers writing Sailor Moon fan fiction. Mm -hmm. um, and for ages, we've talked about like, someday we should do something together. The right project has not presented itself yet, but I think if I was gonna co-write, like she would be my go-to. Like it's time, it's time for us to do this. That's really sweet. Thank you. Um, we are out of time for questions, so. We're gonna wrap it up now. I just wanna plug to everybody. Um, if you are local and you wanna check out some fun swag we have here, we've got cool bookmarks and a lot of different book plates. And of course, all of these books and more, please check those out and buy them for yourself and for your friends and for your enemies and for everybody because <laughs> everybody should have them. Um, and thank you everyone so much for coming. Um, we really appreciate it, both Marissa and Bethany. Thank you so much for being here. 
It's been so much Thank fun. Thank you. Thank you so much for hosting. And thanks everyone for joining us. Yay. <laughs> Bye everybody.